Welcome to the Edgeworth Echoes podcast, Discovering Edgeworth's Town, a hidden gem of Irish history. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Edgeworth Echoes podcast. This is your host, John. It has been a while since we delved into the multifaceted history of the Edgeworths and Edgeworthstown, and this episode unearths another gem from that history. This episode concerns two historical pen pals. Although this term was not in use before the 1920s, our two pen pals came from a time almost a century earlier. One of these pen pals was a school teacher from North Carolina, and the other was an author from Edgeworthstown. Let me introduce you to Rachel Mordecai and Mariah Edgert. Our story begins, however, in December 2023 with an email to the centre from Warrington in North Carolina. The sender of the email was Mary Miley Theobald, who said she had some memorabilia of Mariah Edgert that she would like to send to the centre. That memorabilia was a copy of one of Mariah's letter, a sample of the handwriting of Walter Scott, and a sketch of Edgerton House. Mary, it turned out, was a direct descendant of Rachel Mordecai. <laughs> So how did an American school teacher come to be friends with an Irish author? This friendship began with a portrayal of a character in one of Mariah's books. The book was The Absentee. The character was a coachmaker and moneylender by the name of Mordecai, and his character was a Jew. Mariah's depiction of Mordecai as a greedy and unscrupulous was a common portrayal of Jews at the time. Rachel Mordecai's father, Jacob, had started a school for young women in North Carolina in the early part of the 19th century. Rachel, as one of the teachers in that school, based her teaching methods on the book Practical Education, published in 1798 and written by Mariah Edwards, her mother and her father. She also referred to The Parents' Assistant, a collection of children's stories published in 1796. In her free time, Rachel started to read Mariah's books, and this is where she found the character of Mordecai, and as a Jew herself, was upset by how the character was portrayed. So Rachel wrote to Mariah, started by introducing herself and expressing her admiration for practical education, but then asking why authors portrayed Jews in this manner. Relying on the good sense and candor of Miss Edgeworth, I would ask, how can it be that she who shows such justice and liberality should appear biased by prejudice and should even instill that prejudice into the minds of youth? Can it be believed that Jews are by nature mean, avaricious, and unprincipled? The letter gave Mariah food for thought. She realized she had used a stereotypical portrait of a Jewish man without considering that the portrayal was a fair one. She replied to Rachel, admitting that while Rachel's word had given her some pain, she acknowledged her error and admitted Rachel was correct. Dear Madam, your polite, benevolent and touching letter has given me much pleasure and much pain. It was impossible to remonstrate with more gentleness or in a more convincing as well as persuasive manner than you have done. Your own letter is the very best evidence of the truth you urge in favour of those of your religious persuasion and the spirit of tolerance and benevolence you show is what you rightly expect from others. In her book Harrington, Mariah set out to correct the portrait of Jews as she had depicted them in The Absentee. Her main character, Harrington, has grown up fearing Jews based on tales told to him by his maid, as well as his parents encouraging anti-Semitic views. However, Harrington's views start to change when he witnesses a school bully tormenting a young Jewish lad, Jacob, and his views change even more when he falls in love with Berenice Montenero a young American Jewish lady. After she accepts his proposal, the proposal of marriage, it's revealed her mother was a Christian, and Berenice is not Jewish, but was raised by Mr. Montenero, who was Jewish. While Rachel had some misgivings about this revelation in the book, 
and Mariah admitted she had no ready reason as to why she included this revelation. It was Jacob, Rachel's father, who pointed out that Mr Montenero, who was Jewish and had raised Berenice as his daughter, showed his more noble nature. No doubt this intervention by Jacob was the reason why these two ladies remained in contact with each other. The letters continued for years. They spoke of books they had read. Oliver Goldsmith was mentioned as was Lord Byron. They talked about education and their families. They exchanged gifts and sent each other seeds and gardening tips. Rachel sent her a copy of The Last of the Mohicans, which Maria described as admirable, new and original. They both lost over the fact that the book had belonged to Rachel's brother. Both were also keen fans of Sir Walter Scott, and in one letter Rachel requested a sample of Sir Walter's handwriting. Maria responded to this and had an unusual request of her own. I enclose a few lines of Sir Walter Scott's handwriting as you desire and I assure you that there are few people with whom I would part with a line of his, but you are welcome. It was written to me just when he was first coming to Ireland to pay his long-promised visit to Edgeworthstown. I wish you could send me a mockingbird, if you could get it alive to London to be left at Captain Beaufort's, or to Liverpool to be sent care of Mr Cropper. But I fear the poor bird would not live in our climate. Once Rachel wrote to Mariah from Niagara Falls, describing the falls and wishing that her dear friend Mariah might come and see them for herself. The stupendous majesty of the scene can find no representative in language. Myself and all other worldly objects sink into insignificance. From the window of my chamber the view is filled with wild scenery and the incessant dash, foam and roar. Why, my dear Miss Edgeworth, can you not come to this western world of ours and view its charms and wonders? Rachel Mordecai passed away in 1838. On her deathbed, in a reflection of the character of Berenice in Harrington, Rachel herself converted to Christianity. In 1839, Rachel's brother George visited Edgerton and Mariah sent some gifts back to the Rachel's family. Mariah continued to write to the family until her death in 1849. Then her sister and stepmother continued the correspondence and both families continued this until after the 1940s. And thanks to Mary Miley Theobald, a new correspondence has begun between Edgerton and North Carolina. So that brings us to the end of this episode. It's been a while since an episode was released, but I hope you find this one worth the wait. Please subscribe and share this podcast to your friends and families. Until the next time. If you are interested in learning more about the society and the history they preserve, please visit www mariahedwardcenter.com You can sign up to our newsletter, book tours, learn about our annual literary festival and read up on some of the remarkable people who have links to our town. This has been the Edgeworth Echoes podcast, Rediscovering History 